This is a sad graph. It shows how we kill 70 billion chickens a year, up 10 times from just 50 years ago. And how did this happen? Chickens used to be the skinny jungle fowl in Southeast Asia, not some kind of creature that accounted for 25% of all animal calories. And how do we do all this killing? In theory, humans care about some animals like cats and dogs. So how are we blind to this mass suffering? So weirdly, the answer for where empathetic humans get lots of calories is by taking the skinny bird, making it fat and breaking its legs. So today we're gonna solve the puzzle for why chickens won, but also why they lost. So I did a bunch of research on this. I read books, I read papers, I chatted with chicken experts. And fundamentally chickens won because they're the perfect calorie machine, and they lost because that calorie machine has suffering encoded into its DNA. Just like how humans made it so pugs can't breathe, we've made it so chickens can't walk. And there are three parts of this puzzle today, chicken growth, chicken pain, and chicken hope. So this is kind of an impressive chart in kind of a scary way. Okay, so let's first talk about the growth of chickens. And in order to grow the amount of chickens we kill each year, we've also grown how efficiently we make them. You can imagine this graph. This is just a graph in terms of number of chickens up to 70 billion, 80 billion, but chickens have also almost like 2x their weight. And so part of that you can see here, this is an impressive chart that shows 2x more chickens in factory farms than there are birds in the wild combined. And humanity has done that by making chickens bigger. So chickens raised for meat are now more than twice as big as they were in the 1950s. They used to be, you know, three pounds, and now they're over six pounds. And chickens are also really good at turning feed into edible weight. And so this is a graph that shows for something like fish, chicken, pork, or beef, when you give it a bunch of grain, how much meat do you get out? So for chickens, if you feed it some corn calories and corn is super cheap, what you get out is pretty good chicken meat. And this is actually crazy. The fact that we can just take corn, lots of random corn, shove it through this little optimized chicken thing and get out amazing protein and meat, that's kind of cool. I like to think of this transition as similar to the green revolution in the 1950s, where in Mexico and Pakistan and India and other place in China, we start to optimize plants and start to breed them better so that they became kind of bushier up top. And then they were starting to fall over. And so we had to make their legs, you know, the stalks of these crops shorter and shorter. So we kind of got, they're called dwarf plants, but have that have lots and lots of calories and grain for us. And so we did a similar thing, but to chicken. And the issue is that with a plant, when you make a dwarf plant, it doesn't have feelings. And so the plant is kind of fine. But with chickens, the issue is that it sucks to be a really big chicken with small legs. And so now I'm gonna talk about number two, chicken pain. So here, is an example of why it sucks to be a chicken these days. So here is a, you see these fast growing chickens, they're bred to break. Here's a little chicken. Its legs are way too small for its body. And so they have lameness. They can't move anywhere. They can't explore. They just are kind of sitting there becoming fat. They're unable to stay upright. And then they also, of course, get stuff like heart disease. And so these chickens, usually a chicken would live like two years, but these chickens are optimized to grow so fast where they max out their weight in five weeks and then we kill them. And those five weeks of life really suck. So today I'm mostly going to talk about this sad lameness thing, but remember that there are other issues with chickens. One of them is that we kill a lot of baby boy chickens. So these are, when you're trying to make more hens, the hens lay eggs, you want the eggs that are just the women. And so what we do is we have these machines, you know, once you get a bunch of these little baby birds, it looks at them, it determines which ones, boys versus girls, and it pushes all the boys into a grinder. So that's also an issue. And the other issue is that for these birds, you need to have breeder birds that create these birds. And those breeder birds are designed to get really fat really quick. And so, but you don't want them to do that or else they die. And so what you have to do is you have to starve them. So you have to give them like 10x less food than they want in order to keep them hanging out alive, creating more birds. So those are just two other issues that we're not gonna talk about too much today, but are still problems. So this is a cool recent report that kind of adds up the amount of pain for chickens over time. And you can see here, they break the hours of pain endured by the average broiler chicken as a result of major welfare challenges. And they break it into different kinds of pain. And this is, I believe, a number of hours. So you have excruciating pain, which is the worst, disabling, which is bad, hurtful, which is bad, and then annoying, which is just fine. And then it also breaks it into conventional versus reformed. So these are conventional chickens, the fast growing breeds, and then the reformed are these slow growing breeds. And what you can see here is that in terms of a conventional chicken's life, I think it's something like two thirds or three quarters of its life is in pain. And a lot of that pain comes from lameness. So you can see here's hundreds of hours the average chicken, it can't walk, it can't move, it has 
Of its thousand hours of life, 700 of them are it in pain from its legs and its limbs. And the other thing, it has behavioral deprivation. So it wants to play, it wants to eat, it wants to do things, but it can't do anything because it can't move. And so if that's the life of a chicken, I do want to talk a little bit about chicken hope here. And the hope is that we'll use some of these reformed breeds, some of these slower growing breeds. And as you can see here, if you use a breed that just grows a little bit slower, then the disabling pain can go from 80 hours to 20 hours, or you can decrease its hurtful pain by another 100 hours. And so I think it's really good to use slower growing chickens. This is called the better chicken commitment and more and more groups are moving over to using these slower growing breeds. And so with these breeds, we optimize their DNA a little bit less for suffering. And that better chicken commitment is having lots of growth. And the other thing that's happening is these cage-free programs. So these are for hens, not broiler chickens, but you can see in the US, we're starting to change things. This is you know 10% of hens in the US were cage-free just a decade ago, and now it's almost 50%. And so these hens are ones that are making eggs. And so usually hens are in battery cages, but now we have these cage-free hens where they just get to hang out a little bit. <laughs> They just get to have like a little bit of space to hang out and move around and that's so much better for their well-being and we're starting to do it. So this is a happy and sad graph. It's happy that we've created all these calories for people and protein's good, but it's sad because there's so much unnecessary pain as we've done this. And as you can see here, this chart is not going down anytime soon. So as other countries develop like Africa and Southeast Asia, we're gonna have even more chickens slaughtered for meat. And so yes, chickens won, but they also lost. They won because they're the perfect calorie machine and they've lost because their little perfect calorie machine has suffering encoded into its DNA. I don't know, I think we should do something about it. I think we should care about other beings. So thanks for listening. So if you have any questions or thoughts, put them in the comments below. And as a reminder, this is part of a series on how everything evolved. So if you wanna explore videos on how we got all those macro creatures in the first place, with stuff like the Cambrian explosion, check out these videos here. Or if you want more on how everything evolved and the current selection pressures on Earth today in the Anthropocene, subscribe here. Thanks.